Hi, and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast, once again, live from the ClickWorld conference in Las Vegas. I'm joined by uh, Adam Meyer, Global Products Marketing Manager at uh, Click. Uh, Adam, uh, welcome. Thank you, Eve. It's a pleasure, pleasure to meet you, and it's great to, great to be here. It's great to be back in person again. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's an amazing, amazing vibe, isn't it? So what is your role as the Global Products Marketing Manager? You've been with Click for six years, you told yeah, me? Yeah, six years. Actually, fun fact, I had my six-year anniversary yesterday. Wow. Yeah, uh, at Click. So yeah, so it's, it was a day of anniversary. It's 30th anniversary for Click. Five years for Mike Capone and the, the, me behind it was oh, yeah, uh, six yeah. years, okay. which is which is nice to, to share that anniversary. Um, but yeah, so I've been at Click for six years. So I really started. Um, I've always been in the uh, product marketing team, um, and I started really cut my teeth in the analytics uh, space where we and it covered the role covered all of the analytics portfolio. So that was really good. Got got involved, learnt a lot, uh, and it was really good grounding. And uh, over the last three years, actually more, probably more four years now, um, I've been more focusing on um, the data integration side of the business. Uh, so when we acquired a, a Tunity, um, then there was a, a, an opportunity to um, get involved. And I'm more focused in on the kind of change data capture and data movement side of the whole data integration portfolio. How do you feel that is different, the analytics side and then the data integration, data capture? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because we, we talk end, end to end. So um, if you think about it, the, the data integration side is really sort of the, the important first step, the foundation of getting um, access to the data because there are you know, so many sources that you, you know, are, are valuable data locked inside them. Um, yesterday we had Ford talking about they had um, over 650 sources yeah, uh, that, that they, they tapped into. So that was the element of the data integration side. So we allow uh, customers to get access to, to data, unlock it, um, and then get that moved into wherever they need it to be. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea about data movement is uh, replicating data to put it into kind of a more modernized environment. Um, so we often uh, talk about uh, modernization of particular platforms. So uh, mainframe and SAP are two very critical business critical sources um, and you don't want to be tapping directly into them to, you know, uh, otherwise you bring them down to the knees, you drive up cost. So that's really what's driving more of a cloud modernization data strategy platform. Um, so on our side of the business, we work very closely with the, the cloud vendors. You know, we've got mm -hmm. Microsoft and AWS here as well, Google as well, Snowflake, uh, Databricks, those kind of things. So we deliver data into that environment in the format it needs to be. And we also do the transformation piece as well. So data integration is often talked around methodologies like ELT or um, ETL. So that's extract, transform, load, uh, which is kind of more the traditional approach. And then uh, we, uh, on the data integration side, and click at the moment a more ELT, which is extract and load into where you need it to be and then do the transformations uh, kind of after that. And the transformations are the important bit for the, to get it into analytic ready state. And then, you know, as James Fisher said uh, uh, this morning, um, you know, from a data integration perspective, we're always going to be BI tool agnostic, uh, which I yes. think is great. It gives freedom to, to customers because there's normally more than one tool, um, particularly in large organizations across uh, different elements. But we do firmly believe because we've got the analytics side as well, if you, if you drop click into that end-to-end um, -end piece, that's when you're really going to unlock the, the, the full potential of real-time analytical data pipelines uh, that you can then start Drawing insights on and all the good stuff that uh, you yeah. get out of click analytics side. Yeah, it's part of integrating various sources, like you say, and trying to understand that. I, I understood as well that you're a big fan of new technology. How you see the the large language models helping in understanding your data in a better way? You're talking about the semantics and the meaning of your data and the various contexts. Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. That's that's a really fascinating field. Um, at the moment, we've got some really good movement and traction in, on the analytics side in terms. Of of helping, I like to, you know, we talk about augmented analytics a lot. Yeah. Um, so it's not just about making the product smarter, it's helping people make you know, smarter and better uh, decisions mm -hmm. um, and you know, drawing out insights, making unknowns known and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential to bring that in uh, in the kind of data management, data quality side to help with, because you know, 80% of the work is all around data wrangling, is like getting it into the right shape. Um, our tools help with that in terms of kind of uh, lightweight transformation rules and, and com complex kind of data modeling, but um, bringing in a, a, a layer of um, kind of AI that can help with that uh, is 
offers huge potentials. It's certainly something that's yeah you know, we're thinking about on on a roadmap and, and trying to work out how that is, uh, how that's going to work. But yeah, data, data quality could be quite interesting. Obviously, we got the big news about you know once we sign the deal with Talon, yes, that's going to open up a, a a lot of exciting opportunities and uh, yeah, I already saw the, the auto ML capabilities what what are already available in in uh, Talon this morning in the keynote. So that was really very very interesting. The key drivers, the key insights, what will be deployed on the cloud. Yeah, so I, I think yeah, there's a, there's a big future if you if I see what is coming in the complete platform and then the combination of of talent and click in in, in that respect. Yeah, you, you talked as well about uh, real time insights. Yes, a big fan as well of technology, but as well of sensors and, and so on. How do you see that being uh, applied and used within the click platform? Um, well, again. The, the sort of whole premise around uh, the data automation, um, data automation, the click data integration side of, uh, of the business is all about delivering real-time data um, uh, in a, and then transforming it into an analytic free state. So the idea behind real-time data is it's uh, kind of it, real time is different. It means different things to, to, to different people, right? Exactly. So it's it, yeah, and and that's fine. But what we actually enable our, our customers to do through automation, and hopefully in the future with uh, sort of AI type capabilities. But right now, we automate that that process and, and deliver speed. Uh, and we use a, a technology called change data capture. So that means that we can um, just capture the changes as and when they occur at source and, and deliver them over. So that means that there's always fresh data being delivered. It's delivered, you know basically at the speed of change. So that means that organizations can then be working on the most freshest data. And then that's when you can start making you know, more intelligent decisions, uh, you know, based on up-to-date information rather than kind of then looking in the room. Yeah, the latest exactly. Match, yes. Yeah, and then, you know, you talk about sense. So that's just changing at a kind of transactional level, um, which is important. You think about sort of financial or retail type organizations that they want to keep, uh, keep up to date with, um, you know, sort of monetary transactions, but then also, um, kind of looking how the business operates and delivering the best value to the customer as well. So exposing more data to them, um, you know, if, if from a, uh, uh, whether you brought something on a shop and you want to see it appear on your loyalty card, for example, mm -hmm. we have a, you know, a really interesting um, use case in uh, Germany, of uh, um, Bruniger, uh, okay. a high-end retail chain. Yes, yes. Um, they've got all their data locked up in SAP and they're using uh, data integration to bring their data out of that in real time and they've really helped to improve uh, kind of customer loyalty it's all about customer care for them um, and they're actually um, sort of uh, putting in decisions um, at the time of, of transactions and trying to um, for example ask like uh, survey um, questions in terms yeah. of how was your experience what can we do better uh, and so that is all delivered into their sort of cloud-based system um, mm -hmm. in real time so they can react in in the moment and help customers when they need it most and that's that's improved their customer satisfaction yeah um, what i hear right. here is this kind of very centralized approach when i think about sensors it's more moving everything to the edge and what we see is really moving uh all crunching of the data more to the edge is there something what click is putting in place to help crunch the data at that taking the aggregated insights and then centralizing that to minimize in fact the data movements um Maybe not so much at the edge. Where we really play is because um, there are other tools around for that, particularly like in, in the IT. So, yes. so um, there's, there's tools that, that aggregate that. So again, I mentioned we work very closely with uh, the cloud platforms. Uh, so Kafka is a popular um, uh, platform to play around with for real-time data. And that's normally the kind of the repository for hundreds of sensors. So we don't connect to sensors, but we'll connect to the, the kind of database, if you like, that. At the Those edge. Yes. at yeah, the yeah. edge, okay, so Kafka okay. or uh, Amazon have uh, Kinesis, Azure have Event Hubs. They're all there, that kind of real-time event-based architecture. Uh, so we'll we'll be able to not only deliver you know, data into there as well, uh, but create that whole ecosystem where you can then uh, drive yes. the analytics from. No, for me, it's yeah. it's kind of getting that clear on on what you do, what what you don't. And yeah. How do you connect to that part? So it's Absolutely. pretty clear mm -hmm. what well what the positioning of Click is and what the value mm -hmm. Click is really uh, trying to deliver with the uh, with the platform. When we talk, we talked about uh, the cloud as well, uh, but yeah, it's it's very sensitive. Not l a lot of customers want to move their personal data exactly. into the cloud. So is this something that that you are looking at? Uh, some tools that you provide. Uh, data masking, whatever is, is available to prevent data breaches, uh, to uh, yeah, to prevent 
everything access to data that shouldn't be accessed. Absolutely, access. yeah. So governance has always been a really strong uh, part of Click, you know, from from the analytics days uh, and and onwards as well. So yeah, we're a cloud first company, as Josh said, but not yeah. only cloud. Uh, but yeah, governance has got to be really important. You know, when GDPR came in uh, back in uh, 2018, that made people think about kind of uh, privacy by design rather than an, an afterthought. Yes. And Click's always been, uh, you know, very sensitive map, um, putting the right guardrails, uh, particularly when we open up self-service, because you don't want to have yes. self-service chaos. So that's always been um, allowing um, people to have access, the right people to have access to the right data. So governance has been a, a strong part of that. And, and as, you, yeah, as you say, as you move data into the cloud, uh, there are various kind of capabilities around particular cataloging level uh, where we can allow people to um, be selective and be conscious about the data that they move. Um, so that's the first choice. And then also, if you are putting data in uh, and it can't be at an aggregate level, then yeah, it, can you mask it um, with certain rules? Uh, and then again, having uh, the kind of right governance layers in place that only the right people can get access to that. So um, that's really at the heart of what we do. And, and more recently in uh, in the cloud, we are you know, we offer around um, FedRAMP for you know it's quite interesting or very interesting to um, you know the um, public sector in the US. Yes. Um, you know, you've got all the right ISO securities and things like that. So we're very um, uh, very sensitive and and you know very in tune with what needs to be done. So we make sure that what we're building out in the cloud, you know, matches uh, what people's expectations are in, in when it comes to governance and security. Yeah, absolutely. and really constrained and yeah, we, yeah, regulated. And absolutely. Yes. And it, internally as well, we have the same policies. Yeah, it's not just how the, the services that we offer, but internally we, we, we have like data privacy champions. I'm a data yes. privacy champion for marketing. Okay, and yeah. we have it as a very cross-functional team. We have some really good kind of um, switched on legal uh, counsel that, that kind of helps us with that as well as customer questions yes. so as an entity ourselves we you know we make sure that we comply to all the regulations we need to comply uh, we yeah we treat um, uh, customers data uh, sensibly make sure we're not taking the wrong data uh, mm. and all that kind of stuff so you know we, we, we are not asking for people's personal data but if they choose to put it in the cloud then uh, we have the kind of guardrails in, in place uh, and the agreements in place as well to make sure it's all all correct proper so I, can, dotted, T's crossed. I can rest assured, uh, I can sleep uh, very uh, in you can, easy You can way. sleep very I'm, easy. I'm safe with with Click in the cloud, wherever wherever it is. I'm Absolutely. safe on that part, if I uh, very well understand. Adam, as a wrap up, a last question, but I always ask, data connects everybody, music connects us as well. What's your favorite type of music or your favorite band? Oh, that is a great question. I, was a, I have quite a wide, uh, um, kind of uh, choice of, of music. So um, I think at heart, I used to say I like anything from kind of like um, Blondie to Bauhaus, but you think you're going all the way around. Yeah, yeah. So it goes it goes back, but I think I'm an 80s kid. So yeah, anything that's kind of um, bass is, is uh, gets gets my attention, gets my toes tapping. So, so. You're, you're happy to be here in Vegas because it's all the time 80s music what I hear. So yeah. it's, it's very weird for me all the time. But anyway, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm well at home with, yeah, with yeah. 80s music, but yeah. Adam, it was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, Steve, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.